Hey everybody, I needed to come out and share something with y'all, um, as watchmen, we are to watch, and some of us have dreams and visions, and the Lord is surely pouring out His Spirit, and I know that there are a few dreams that I've had that I shared a long time ago. And then when I go back and I look at them now, it's like, oh my gosh, they have so much more meaning. And I've learned so much more since then, right? So a few years ago, I'm going to go back to, I had a Trib is Real dream. And it was when I was doing Sunsets at the Lake. So I'm going to say probably two or three years ago that I had this dream. And I didn't give very much details as I was a little nervous and not used to this. And I now I know the meaning of so many other things and representations. So back in my trib dream, trib is real. When you have a dream from the Lord and you wake up and you're like literally shaking and you remember every single detail from beginning to end, every single color. Um, yeah. So I kept praying and praying, Lord, if this is from you, help. <laughs> if it's not from you, take it away in the Jesus name. So it took me about six hours. I was like sitting out here, like really praying and and I was living here at the time. And all of a sudden a brother uh, from up north had called me and said that he was led by the Holy Spirit to call me. I had no idea what I was going through. So I shared my dream with him and he kind of walked me through it. And I thank you brother, eyes open and disgusted. Uh, for taking that time with me But boy things have sure developed since then <laughs> what a journey it's been Okay, so in my dream, I'm just gonna share my dream and Then I have more confirmation on top of it. Okay, so in my dream I was sitting here in the living room in my pajamas, so I knew it was morning and all of a sudden, the front door busted open. Literally busted open. And then walked my oldest daughter with a whole bunch of people that I didn't even know. And surprised at what was going on. And all these people coming through and people were like just grabbing things and were saying how much for this or how much for that. and. I was a little startled at what was happening, but I was very concerned about my modesty and the fact that I was still in my pajamas. And so I said, well, gee, I wish I had known you were coming. I didn't get the memo. I remember I kept saying I didn't get the memo <laughs> several times. So my main concern was to go and find some clothes to put on because I felt awkward being around a bunch of strangers. And as I went back to my bedroom that I'm in now, I opened the closet to find that the closet was not the same shape or, or anything like that. It was a different closet and, and the clothes didn't fit me. And so I came out and all of a sudden my oldest, my youngest daughter showed up and asked me what was wrong. And I said, well, I'm just trying to find some clothes and to put on because I don't understand why everybody's here. And she said, well, I'll help you find some clothes. And that was the end of her appearance in my dream. But at that time I had also walked into the kitchen and noticed that there was a whole bunch of people uh, sitting around, drinking, partying, talking, and I was like kind of invisible. It was like nobody saw me. Now, as I went back through my dream now, a little while ago, and to now, back then I had a white 
broken down refrigerator but in my dream I had a black refrigerator which I do have now and they were taking food out of the refrigerator they were taking food out of the cabinet and stuff like that and canned goods and everything and all these other people were sitting there partying and drinking and and like nobody even saw me pretty much I noticed a man standing against the wall and I recognized him as in my dream as my ex-husband now knowing that that could be a Jesus figure right and he's wearing a gray suit and a red tie and a white shirt and he was just standing there leaning against the wall like in an at ease position you know in the military so this feeling pretty awkward I went back to my bedroom and I figured okay well, I'll start I'll start looking through my dressers and see what I can find and somebody had said to me something about my bed or something about the bed and I said don't touch my bed please that's mine and I need that to sleep in and I said where's my dressers and somebody said to me I think your dressers got moved across the street so running across the street into a house that was completely pitch black dark empty no people no nothing in this house absolutely nothing I ran back to this house and I said no my dressers aren't there where's my clothes I just wanted my clothes So then again, I looked at my daughter and I said, what's going on here? What is going on? And the words spoken to me were, there is an event that's going to be taking place in Nevada and we have to help. I'm like, okay, I just want to put some clothes on. I was very embarrassed. So my brother helped me to realize that since I was in my pajamas and it was summertime, it was about this time, and um, even though the video says about two years ago, it may be two or three years ago that this happened, and, and when I put out the video, I didn't articulate it very well, being very nervous, and the first time I ever had a dream, this, that shook me up this much. And he reminded me that since I was in a white nighty, a white nightgown, that that was probably my my wedding. I was in white, so that was probably my, my wedding dress anyways. And I was seeing trip. I wasn't in trip. I was seeing a visual of things that were to come and things that were to happen. And that's exactly what was happening. They were all taking everything from the home, including the food. They were all partying and drinking. I was non-existent uh, to everybody here, except for that one person that told me to go across the street for my dressers. None of the clothes fit me in the closet. So I was dressed already, right? Thank you, Jesus. And that man, you know, was my ex at the time, still is, <laughs> um, represents Jesus. So Jesus was watching over all of this, y'all. He's watching over it all. So then I remember a few weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, I had put out a video where they're planning on storming Area 51. And in last night's video, I also put out that they were doing nuclear missile tests in Area 53. And this is all in Nevada. Okay, so this, 
I'm going to put the video link. As Brother Gurge, I want to thank you for sharing this with me because I had shared my dream with him. And he remembered this. So when he came across this video, he shared it with me. Now, I remember sharing with you all that the Area 51 guy, Christian, has a brother. And he had said that Man, this has started out as a joke, and, and now they've got millions of people planning on being there, that they were planning on um, doing like a concert and stuff, trying to keep the people occupied and happy, serving food and, and stuff like that, campgrounds, allowing them, and they were even building extra space for them and land. Um, and praying that, you know, no, nobody would get crazy and go try to storm against that Area 51 area. Because uh, Christian gets up there and he gets up on Tickapoo Mountain or whatever it is and, and zooms in on Area 51 uh, from the outside. And he is, in many of his videos, there has been the sounds of practicing drills of guns and artillery and cannons and stuff like that going off in his videos. And there's been a lot of action going on in the skies over there as well. And he's really telling everybody to be really cool. But it seems to me that if you've got two million people in Rachel, Nevada, where the alien is, and they've got t-shirts made that said, we stormed Area 51. And I figured that they probably, you know, in my mind, figured that well, Area 51 probably already knows about this and or the government slash, and has everything set up uh, to counteract any, any trouble whatsoever or for them being able to cross over. And people are being really stupid, saying, what are they going to do, kill us all? Yes. Uh, we know now that they've got weapons of mass destruction in the sky that can start fires, that can kill people, that can do all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, the frequencies, they can control people's minds. They can control the, the critters in the woods that people are seeing coming out of the woods. Goodness, my encounter at the lake, <laughs> my goodness. So I see so much more in this dream that I had a few years ago that I can relate to now. Am I saying anything's gonna happen right now? No, but I'll leave the video in the description box and, and you can see what happened because what happened was, you know, just my gist of it and then, of course, you'll add more. It shows that they were all denied permits right from the beginning um, from even being able to have this concert or anything. And they were going to try to put a stop to this right away. Well, all of a sudden, they seemed to change their mind. Now the government has porta -po uh, porty toilets or whatever call them, you call them uh, being shipped in. I think, what, 10,000 of them, they said. And food and tents and lodging and housing and, and and they're preparing all this for the masses that will be there it's like enticing isn't it how subtle and suddenly is what i'm worried about i'm not worried don't take anything i say out of content okay you know i don't worry take no thought for tomorrow but that dream that I had was very real. And I remember every detail. I remember my rapture dream. I, there are several more dreams that I have not put out that I remember to the very detail. And that actually mean more now and probably are meant to be shared now, which I will do. Lord willing, as there's been so many distractions and things going on to to keep us busy. I think a lot of the discord on 
YouTube has caused a lot of problems as well. Trying to take our joy away, which we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Revelation 3.11, robbing of your crown. Let no man steal your crown. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people fall away. I saw pe many people fall away after the 717 thing. Crazy. Really bad. Um, don't fall for date setting. God's not going to tell us a date. He's going to be right here on time, just like he said he would. He promised to keep his promise to the bride, his bride. I believe him. But I do feel like I need to share this as a recap and a warning. My goodness, those, if we're here when Area 51 gets stormed, my goodness, I don't know, it's going to be, anyways, pray. Just pray. I won't even add anything to that. I'll let you listen to the video. But as far as my trip dream, I do remember it. And like I said, if, if when you wake up in the morning, first thing you should do is pray and ask the Lord if it was from Him to remember every detail, and if not, to wipe it out of your mind. And or if you feel led to keep a journal and write things down, because sometimes we just get little dreams in, in parts and or all of a sudden somebody will confirm something. So that's where Brother Gurge came in this morning and said that, that he remembered my dream and shared this video with me. Um, so that was another confirmation on what's happening and everything that's been said and done in between. And no, it's not me. It's all glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. So I am saying this because I need, felt like I needed to recap it and get it out there and, and really speak out what happened in my dream. Not to cause fear, because the tribulation time is the time for Jacob's trouble. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. You need to believe that you need to... You need a Savior, first of all, admit it. Believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, repent of your sins, and pick up your cross and follow Him. He will indwell you with the Holy Spirit, and you will become a new creation. An old man passes away, and all things become new. It's a personal relationship. There's no rules and regulations with Jesus other than picking up your cross and follow Him. There are conditions to everything in the scriptures if you read before and after. Like Romans 8, 1, for example, for there now for is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, right? That's Romans 8, 1. Romans 8, 2 says, for those of us who follow after the spirit and not after the flesh. So that verse doesn't apply for everybody and everything. Just for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are following after the spirit and not after the flesh. We are not in part, we are, we are in this world, but not we're not of it. We know this is not our home. We're just passing through. So I pray that this is encouraging to someone and or confirmation uh, that maybe somebody else has had something on this and needs to fill in their blanks with. My Lord, He is so amazing. Oh, amazing days we're living in just to be alive for a time like this. I never thought that this would ever come to this. Like I said, the video will be in the description box. As Debbie in Te Texas is always watching and looking up, right? <laughs> so keep looking up, brothers and sisters. Peace out from Texas. This is Debbie. The king is coming. <laughs>